when I was lying in the driveway, bleeding to death, I kept talking to myself, like in my head, like, okay, you're gonna be okay. Just don't close your eyes till there's someone here that can help you. Kenneth on with 911, where is your emergency? She has a court order against him. He gave him divorce papers last week and okay. he said he was going to kill her and her family. <laughs> I decided right then and there that I wasn't giving up. And I haven't since. It was about 6.45, it started to get dark, and I pulled into my garage. As I went to grab the door handle to get out of the car, I glanced in my side view mirror and I saw him leaning against the garage wall, only about three feet from me, and he was cocking a gun. And I heard pop, pop, pop. I had one person say to me, why should I give up my rights because you made a bad choice? I think the national average is it takes a woman nine times, nine tries to leave an abusive relationship. I was on number two. I tried to get away from him as, as best I could. up three and a half weeks later. He shattered my right femur. He shattered my left knee. The last shot hit my L2 vertebrae and I was paralyzed from the waist down. If you look back on a lot of shootings, it, it's sad that we had knowledge that this person was dangerous or might do something and it was just ignored. It's like their rights to keep a gun outweigh our rights to be safe. I'm always looking for somebody to pull a gun and start shooting. You know, it, it seems illogical, but once you, it's happened to you, it's like your brain becomes, you know, rewired to look for that danger everywhere you go. and. I think of all the survivors of all these shootings, and I know it's the same for them. I mean, it just keeps going and going. And, you know, I have to believe that one day there's gonna be more of us that have been affected by gun violence than those of us that haven't. I really feel like that's where we're headed. I have heard some, you know, legislators down from South Georgia, well, my constituents need their guns to hunt and feed their family. I am a gun owner. So let's say you lose your guns for two and a half weeks. Big deal. If then when you go and the judge decides, you know, that it wasn't warranted, then you get your guns back. What is the harm of being proactive? You know, and in my case, they let him leave with a gun in his truck. And he came back here five days later and he shot me with it. So I'm your sister, I'm your neighbor, I'm your friend. I'm the woman that you see in the grocery store. If there's a protective order issued against someone, it's because they're dangerous. They do not need to have access to firearms. My medical bills were over two million and my health insurance paid those bills. I, I was lucky we had resources, you know, but a lot of women don't. And so what are they going to do? You know, my heart had stopped when they got me to the emergency room. They cracked open my chest, my trauma surgeon did. And then he massaged my heart with his hand and it started back. Probably a year later, I ran into my trauma surgeon at the hospital. I'm bebopping around in my wheelchair. And he was like, Janet, oh my God, you are our miracle. And 
he said, you're the one percent. He said, well, a hundred times I do that procedure to save someone, it works once. That I thought about a hundred people standing in a circle, holding hands and looking at each other like, who is it gonna be? And it was me. So that's why this is really important to me. Most women don't make it. And I feel a responsibility to speak for those that didn't.